this is the start of chapter 12. Chapter 12 is optics, geometric optics. <coughs> this begins on page uh, 385. 385. And first of all, uh, my wife has drawn for your entertainment a likeness of me <laughs> and our youngest son, Nathaniel. Profile of Nathaniel, full shot of me, just for your entertainment. <coughs> Okay, well, um, <coughs> optics. Chapter 12 is on optics. Optics is actually one of my favorite subjects. We could, we could rightfully study a whole year on optics. As a matter of fact, uh, if you look at all the physics classes that I've taken in the past from uh, undergraduate college to graduate school, uh, I've taken more optics classes than anything else. Uh, I think I've had probably about four or five different types of optics classes. So <coughs> there's a lot to cover in optics um, and um, w this chapter 12 here is a very good introduction. <coughs> if for you all who take um, physics in college <coughs> you all will go uh, further into optics, but um, let's let's start right on page 384 <coughs> and on 380. Uh, well, really 380. Excuse me, 386 and 387. Optics, of course, is a study of light and and light waves and and how we can bend and refract uh, light waves. <coughs> um, it's very practical from the glasses that we wear, of course, to, um, to studying, uh, of course, people, if, if you use microscopes or telescopes, you're using optical lenses, uh, anytime um, <coughs> we see with our eyes, so, so uh, uh, the, the, uh, of course, we're looking at light, light rays. Um <coughs> the whole realm of lasers are very, kids and everybody's fascinated by lasers. Um, lasers is definitely in the realm of optics. Um, there's a whole new field coming out now. It's been around a bit. It's called um, electro-optics. It's the combination of uh, uh, the electrical properties of optical materials. It's, it's, it's uh, developing very, very rapidly. Um, <coughs> and with um, and it's out of that comes the whole idea of not only lasers, but um, solid state lasers to LEDs, light emitting diodes, and every conceivable kind of plasma tube and, and plasma screen that you can think of all comes out of the realm of electro optics. And so <coughs> it's a very practical field um, in that a lot of the products that we actually use on a day-to-day -day basis, anywhere from LEDs to types of lights to displays, <coughs> all come out of the study of optics and electro-optics. <coughs> um, <excuse> me. <coughs> um, but this chapter deals with the fundamentals of optics. And so, first of all, <coughs> if we have a, a laser beam, and I have the laser, this is a small little laser, that you can buy even in the store. And I, I don't know if you can see this beam. It's, it's a red beam. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure if you can see it and what color it shows up for you, but for me it's a red laser. Um, <coughs> lasers are wonderful tools for using in optics because you can see exactly where the r beam of light goes to. Uh, but you have to be very careful. Never look directly into a laser, of course. Never shine it directly into your eyes. Never shine it into somebody else's eyes. Um, <coughs> so in the lab, uh, we will definitely make use of lasers to indicate where the ray of light goes. <coughs> so, <coughs> um, But let's talk about mirrors. Um, I'm going to erase this portrait for my wife. Um, hmm. 
it's not wanting to come off. I better hit it with this. There we go. That will be better. <coughs> uh, okay. Sorry. <coughs> well, mirrors. We're all familiar with mirrors. Like this one right here. And we look in the mirror and we see our reflection. But how does a mirror really work? Well, <coughs> of course, your typical mirror, what your typical mirror is formed, but lots of things will reflect, of course. Your typical mirror is a piece of glass, and then you put a little bit of, of silver, silver backing, or some metallic backing on it, and the light comes in, and it could be a, in the back, oftentimes it's in the back, to protect the back end, but they have what's called, a f this would be called a back reflecting mirror, because the reflecting part is actually on the back of the glass. <coughs> That's typically the kinds of mirrors we buy in stores and hang up in our houses. A front uh, reflecting mirror would be one that's re or that's what typically people use in optics and in, in experiments because um, you want it to reflect up front. So you put the reflective material up front, not in the back. But <coughs> if this is, a f say, this is the front of the mirror, that's the back of the mirror. But basically, the law of reflection says this. And I'm, for right, I'm going to draw the mirror flipped this way. This is now a mirror. Okay. Whenever we do optics, we always draw what we call the normal. This is the normal line. The normal line being defined as the line that's perpendicular to the surface. So if, <coughs> if my mirror is oriented up and down, the normal line is directly perpendicular up. If my mirror is oriented like this, the normal line would be oriented directly perpendicular to that. So the normal, and we've seen the normal line in other <coughs> situations too. Okay. We have what we call a incident ray. This is called the incident ray. We're going to talk about the light as it travels in a ray. And a ray is simply um, if we talk about like particles, a photon of light, it travels in a straight line, just like a laser beam. Imagine this were a laser beam that, that did not diverge any. La all laser beams do diverge and spread out uh, uh, to, to some degree. <coughs> but an ideal laser beam is completely straight, just like a, uh, a ray. <coughs> so. We always define what we call the incident angle as the angle uh, theta a a incident with regards to the normal. And the ray will come in and it reflects. This will be the reflected ray. <coughs> Ref the refracti reflected ray. And it reflects such that. <coughs> the reflected angle is equal to the incident angle. Okay? This, this makes sense. So in other words, if suppose this is 20 degrees, 20 degrees from the normal, it's going to reflect with 20 degrees from the normal but in the, uh, in, uh, in the other direction. Okay, so it's going <coughs> to be on the opposite side of the normal. So, and this is what we know from, from your practical experience from mirrors. All mirrors operate this way. <coughs> um, <coughs> so, um, if, if we look at, if you look on page 387, there's a picture, 387, <coughs> there's a picture of a woman, okay, and <coughs> going to erase this. Basically, the, the picture on the bottom of page 387 is this. You have a mirror, okay, and um, 
Here I'm going to draw a stick figure of a person. That's a terrible person. But <clears throat> when he sees, when he looks in the mirror, what does he see? When you, look, when you look straight across the mirror, it reflects directly back to him. Okay? <clears throat> um, if, if he's standing on the, say that's the floor right there. <clears throat> If light is scattered all over, then notice that his feet right here, if this distance, say, is um, six feet, say, say you're six feet tall, then his, the light coming from the feet will bounce the mirror, bounce off the mirror, and reflect right to your eyes. And so when you look into the mirror, what do you see? <coughs> you see... you see your reflection Oops. bad reflection but basically when you look across you see yourself if this is five if this is ten feet from here to here you see yourself as if you were ten feet behind the mirror <coughs> okay and this makes sense because w if when your feet our reflect come in here, here as you draw normal, this angle is equal to that angle. <coughs> the light that coming from, uh, say the light that's scattered and, and hits your feet, comes in here, reflects, hits your eye, but you view it as if, where did it come from? You view it as if it came from behind here. Okay? <coughs> so, so actually, this is what we call the object. In this case, the object is you. This is what we call the image. The image is what you see. Okay. Now, in this case, <coughs> we have what we call a virtual, virtual image. The image that you see behind the mirror is not real. If I if I hold this mirror up, and I know you can't see this, but if I look at my reflection in the mirror, I appear to be way back here. Okay? I appear to be back here. Now, I'm not back here, but so when I see the image I see standing right in front of me is as if it's right back here. So this is a virtual image. A virtual image, this is what, uh, you won't find this in the textbooks, but this is what I tell students. If this is a mirror and you see an image back here, how do you know if it's real or if it's a virtual image? It's a virtual image that is not real. It's a virtual image if to get to the image you have to break through the glass or lens. If there's any optics right here and to get to the object you have to break through a glass, then that image is a virtual image. It's not real. Okay. Later on, well, a, a real image is one where you can, like for instance, if you have a, a, um, a slide pr pr projector and you project that image onto the wall, a real image is one that you can, that is a real image versus a virtual image. Okay, A real image is one that if you have a slide projector, you can project it onto the wall and you can put your hand actually on the wall and the image will, f will be right on your hand. So it's an image that you can actually, you can touch in the sense that you can put your hand right in front of the image. The image will actually be on your hand. Okay? And if, you, if you've fooled around with a slide projector, you know exactly what I mean. You can put the image right on your hand. You can put it on you. It's, that's what we call a real image. A virtual image is one <coughs> that you, you can clearly see the image, but you cannot put your hand on it. In order to get your hand onto the image, you have to break through the glass that you're looking through. Okay? <coughs> so that's why it's called a virtual image. So sometimes students get a little uh, confused on the differences in optics between what we call a real image and a virtual image. Just, just to repeat, if, 
if, you, if you're working on a problem and you can't decide, oh, is it a real image or is it a virtual image, think. You're on this side. You, the object is over here. If you have to break through a mirror or a lens right here to get to the object, then that means the object is a virtual, th that, that means the image is a virtual image. Okay. <coughs> um, if we flip over, and by the way, maybe I didn't, I should mention this 387. This here, the, the idea that the incident angle is equal to the reflected angle, that's called the law of reflection. Okay, and we talk about this ray here. The ray comes in here, and this is called the reflected, the reflected ray. The reflected ray right here. Now, <coughs> from looking at mirrors, right, you can, you can tell from a study of mirrors. <coughs> okay, all mirrors produce. Okay, all mirrors, all flat mirrors, produce a virtual image. Okay. In fact, you cannot have a mirror that produces a real image unless you're use. Well, I shouldn't say never. If you're using the mirror to bounce off uh, the the reflector, to just simply to reflect a a a projector image, then you could. So we shouldn't say always. But let me say this, <coughs> most of, if you're looking into a mirror, then all mirrors are going to produce virtual images. <coughs> okay. Let's, um, <coughs> uh, I'm going to erase this. Um, if if you turn on page, turn flip to page three eighty eight. Okay, they talk about s spherical mirrors, and then if you look at page three eighty eight, three eighty nine, and three ninety, and for the next couple pages, we're talking about uh, mirrors that are shaped. Okay, so now there's a. S Spherical, ah, can't spell. Spherical mirror. Okay, what is this? This is a mirror that actually, imagine you take a ball, which is a sphere, okay, and the radius here, he has a constant radius. The radius here is constant. And what that means is that the surface of this mirror has a constant radius for about some point. So in other words, you take a sphere, you have a constant radius from here to here, okay, and then you get rid of everything else. Okay? So it's it's a shape of a ball or a sphere shape of a sphere, but it's only a portion of it, okay? Um, now, if, if you look on page, um, okay, so one of the properties of this, of this kind of mirror, well, first of all, let me redraw this. If you have a spherical mirror, with any, any problem we do, whether it's a mirror or a lens, we're always going to draw right in the middle a dotted line. They don't talk about this in the book, but I like to tell students, draw right in the middle a flat line perpendicular to the mirror or optic you're looking at, and we're going to call this the optic, the optic axis. So the optic axis is basically our, our baseline. Everything we're going to measure is right along, or it's 
oftentimes in reference to the optic axis. Okay. Um, <coughs> if you okay, in this kind of mirror, in a spherical mirror, there's a focal point. There's a focus, and let's say it's right here. So this would be the focus. And what that means is if I bring in a parallel line, a par if I bring in a parallel ray, it will reflect, if I would draw the normal to this, this is a normal, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, and it reflects right back. That angle is equal to this angle to reflect down to the focal point. So we call this the focus or the focal point. That's where all the, the lines come into focus. So no, no, no matter where I bring in this ray, it will come down to the focal point. Even if I bring it in right on the optic axis, it bounces directly off and comes back to the focal point. And so these kinds of mirrors, these shaped mirrors in a sphere, have a focal point. All incoming rays that are parallel, so this will be a parallel, a parallel ray coming into the mirror, they all f focus at the focal point. Okay, that, 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 that is a property of that. And the focal point, if you look on the bottom of page 389, page 39, the focal point, the, this distance from here to here, the focus, the focal length, what we call the focal length, we're going to write as a little f, it's this distance from the base of the mirror to this point, it's the radius of curvature divided by 2. Okay, so the radius of curvature is an r, in other words, the the radius would be way out here. That is, the, if I take and when when I form the mirror, I form it by drawing a fixed point all along the radius. Well, the focal point is half of that, half of that distance. Okay, um, that's on the bottom of page uh, three eighty uh, nine. Um, 389. Okay. Um, okay, let me... Um, <coughs> um, okay, if you go to page 3... Up, 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 up. If you go to page 390, you'll still, you see that... Um, Okay. Now, actually, let me say this. If he he talks about on page three eighty nine and three ninety, he talks about parabolic shapes. Par parabolic mirrors. That actually, this is true for a spherical mirror. But actually, there are, there is a um, if you really this is a little confusing here. But if um, if if you want a true f if you want all the rays truly to focus at the focal point, you have to use a parabolic mirror. Okay, look on the top of page three ninety. Um, it says for a curved mirror to focus all horizontal line into a single focal point, the mirror must be shaped as a parabola. So this really has to be shaped as a parabola to have a focal point right here. But so why do we talk about the spherical mirror? It's because a spherical mirror is much more easy to manufacture than a parabolic mirror. Okay, um, pair, uh, if you look at curve, if when when you manufacture a mirror, it's much easier to generate it as as a sweep of the arm with 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 a with a fixed constant radius, which is a spherical mirror. That's much more easier to manufacture. Most mirrors, most curved mirrors. Are are this, a parabolic mirror is the one that truly will reflect all the rays back to the focal point. A spherical mirror has a little bit of, 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 of air doing it, 
but that's typically what 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 we actually tend to use anyway. So we wanted to, but for all practical purposes, we can still use a spherical mirror with that that has this property. Um, I hope that's not. Oops. Excuse me. Hope that's not too confusing. Okay. Um, if we look at now, we're going to flip over to page 390, um, 390 and three, 391 and 392, and we're going to start looking into the idea of doing what we call ray tracing. Okay. Okay, we're going to actually work through the problem right on um, work through the problem right on page 391 and 390. Uh, actually, we're going to work on the problem right on 393. 393. Okay, and what we have is we have a a curved mirror. And the first thing we do is to draw the optic axis, okay, and we draw a focal point and a radius. Remember, the focal point is half the radius. I should really try to do this precisely, actually. I'm going to draw this. Here we go. That will be the focal point, and that will be the radius. And we can also put the focal point and the radius on the other side, too. Okay, this is a spherical mirror. Okay. Um, now, this is what we call concave. Now, we're approaching it from the left. So concave, there's two types of we're going to look at, concave versus convex, Con convex mirror. In a concave mirror, it's angling back to you, as opposed to a convex mirror, which if we're looking at it from the left, it would go like that. That would be what we call a convex mirror. Okay. But what, what we do, let's see, the problem is, uh, this is, it says this is 5 out to here, 5 centimeters, and this is 10 centimeters out to here, and this is in centimeters. Actually, I think I doubled that, is that all right? The scale's right? Okay. So, um, oops, that's 5, that's from here to here is 5, from here to here is 5, and the object is out another 10. So from here to here is 10 centimeters, and we have what we call the object. The object, right here, the object, we draw a little arrow. The object, we, we, we assume that all the light is coming from the object. <coughs> the object is what um, what's forming the, the, the image. In other words, all the light is, we say, we would imagine that the light is coming from back back here, and it's in the shape of this object. The object may be an arrow, it may be a tree, it may be a person, okay? And then here's the mirror. And so the question is, where is the image? Now, there's three questions we want to ask, and I'm going to write them over here. <coughs> On all these problems, there's typically three questions. Question number A is, is the image... Uh, is it a virtual or a real image? <coughs> Number B is is it up is it upright or inverted image? And then C is it 
is it m magnified or reduced image? Okay. <clears throat> now let's go over briefly what we mean. Virtual or real image, we've, we've already talked about that. If the r object, me, if the image is real, we can actually see the image on a screen. If the virtual is, if the image is virtual, then uh, we have to break through a glass to get, get to it. If, that's one question. The second question is, is the image upright or inverted? Okay, if the object is always, we assume is always upright, but the image may be upright or it may be inverted. And number C, the image may be larger or magnified than the object, or it may be reduced. Okay, so these are the three questions that we want to ask. So the first of all, whenever you do these problems, always use a ruler, and um, don't don't please do not freehand these images or these drawings. Always get good graph graph paper if you can. Um, draw it and scale it out and measure it either in centimeters or inches. Actually scale it out and measure it as best you can. And always draw